In this video, we are going to be installing Wiki.js in a Podman container locally on your computer. Hi everyone, my name is Robert Meisen and I make videos on beep beep stuff. This is helpful for two reasons. Firstly, if you don't actually have a home lab, Using containers locally on your computer is actually a really good way to get into the home lab scene, start using the computer you already have, likely the one that you're watching this video on right now, which I appreciate by the way. And secondly, it's also really important to document everything you're doing. You can document your learning progress here, but you also can write down important things like IP addresses for the different services you're running, rules about your firewalls and ports, projects that you're planning, equipment, helpful links and code snippets. There's a lot more you can obviously do with wikis, but it's a really great way to actually run something locally. It doesn't matter which system you're using for this, as long as you can run the terminal. Now I have done tutorials about this in the past uh, using OpenSUSE micro OS, but you can use any kind of version of Linux you want. You can do this on Mac or Windows. It doesn't really matter, so long as that you can run commands locally. For this tutorial, I will be using my desktop, which is running Linux. I'm running OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. But again, as long as you can use a terminal, you can follow along. If you haven't done anything with Podman, or containers or you want to know more about what that is i'm definitely going to put a link up at the top of the video i'll also put one in the description below that will kind of explain something about containers and podman in general um, it's definitely my go-to um, orchestration tool for using containers so definitely look into it if you haven't done it before so now we're at the computer we're just going to have a look at a couple of things and then i'm going to open up a program that you can use to manage your podman containers on your computer Everyone knows by now that you can do everything via the terminal. I'm going to scroll up the text font just so you can uh, see it a little bit easier. And you can use your standard commands like podman uh, ps to see what containers you have running right now. Nothing's going to show up there. You can look at any containers that are closed by using the uh, uh, a tag there. And you can just say, yep, OK, and see what was there running previously when it was shut down. Standard stuff. We also can uh, pull images locally. So you can type in an image you want. So we can say podman pull. And in this case, we can grab the uh, version of wiki.js we want. So we say Linux server wiki.js, grab the latest version. I already pulled this, but uh, we'll pull it again anyway. And it will pull the image down to the computer. Now we've done videos on this before about managing containers using the terminal and it's really quick, it's really easy. You can do a lot of stuff in here, but for the simplicity sake of running a nice local Podman environment, I'm actually going to show you Rancher Desktop. Now I use Rancher because for me, uh, Rancher, um, you know, it's done by the same company that does OpenSUSE. You can of course use Podman Desktop. I actually use Podman Desktop on my framework laptop. Uh, and I'm trying out both, but right now I'm doing a lot of stuff with Rancher, so um, I'm going to be showing you Rancher Desktop. So in Rancher Desktop, what we're going to do firstly is we're going to click on images and you can see any images that we've got downloaded. So we can click add image at the top right corner and then we can type in the image we want. In this case, we're going to type in Linux server uh, forward slash wiki.js and we'll grab the latest version of that. Click pull and it's going to pull this image to your computer. Okay, now that the uh, image has been pulled down, we can go over to containers here. And what we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to start containers. Now, Pod, uh, Rancher Desktop just has some basic stuff about what containers are currently running. But as you can see here, we can't see about setting up new stuff. All we can do is look at port forwards. We can look at any images we've downloaded. There's the uh, Wiki.js uh, image we just pulled. So what we're going to do now is click on cluster dashboard. Now, when you click on cluster dashboard, it's going to open up a new window and here you have the cluster dashboard. Now, this is kind of like what Rancher looks like. It's not exactly one for one, but this is pretty much what Rancher looks like anyway when you install it on a server. But this is, remember, running locally on your computer. This actually itself is running inside of a container. So this is quite cool. So the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to go over to workloads. So as you can see, we don't have any deployments here right now. So we need to create that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit create, hit deployment. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to give it some details. So we're going to call this wiki.js test. This is a namespace. You could actually have multiple containers inside of this space here. So this is just basically the pod. Um, but for the purposes of this, I'm just going to call it wiki.js test. I'm going to call the, I'm going to put the description as wiki.js. It's a good idea to get into the habit of writing descriptions for stuff for later. But the actual name of this pod is going to be called wiki.js. I want to be able to reference that later. For the container image, what we're going to do is we're going to type in Linux server forward slash wiki.js and we'll grab the latest version. So Linux server forward slash wiki.js comma latest and then that will pull the latest version. Uh, we're also going to add port and we're going to expose this on the um, uh, on the load balancer because we want to use the built-in load balancer that's inside of Rancher here for Rancher desktop. And um, Wiki.js likes port 3000. So I'm going to put in port 3000 for now. And uh, for the name of this, we'll call it Wiki.js. Um, so we can see this later. Um, so basically right now we're saying that the container wants port 3000, Wiki.js wants that and it's going to be listening, but it's going to pass through to a load balancer, but all you need to do is make sure that these are the same for Wiki.js. Then you're going to hit create. Now, once it's done this, uh, what's going to happen is we're going to want to forward the port because what we're doing is using the built-in rancher load balancer. So right now it says active. So if you minimize the dashboard and go to the rancher desktop uh, UI and go to port forwarding, what you should have now is two different uh, things happening here. You've got wiki.js test, that's the namespace thing that we've just done, and the load balancer. It's only important to forward one of these. We're gonna forward the wiki.js test, and you're gonna click forward. And this port here is what you're going to access wiki.js on, on your computer. So we're gonna say port uh, 4200, we'll see if that's available, yes. Hi everyone, I just want to remind you that if you do like the video, do press the like button on the video and subscribe to me if you do want to see more content from me. I do enjoy giving this content to you. Also, I do read all of the comments, so if there is something that you want to see explained more, or maybe perhaps a completely different topic that you want me to produce a video on, just drop a comment down below. I will read it and I will reply to them. Now, back to the video. If you go to your browser here and it says, and you type in localhost 4200, you can see I get to the installation of Wiki.js. And that's because we have forwarded that port via this, because this is kind of the part of the uh, load balancer in effect. So from Rancher, because we are using Rancher desktop for this part and we are forwarding kind of this service. So it is kind of listening to the service that we deployed, port 3000, but we are forwarding it to the local system here so we can access it locally. So now, as long as you have this turned on by default, like here below Rancher Desktop, you can also access it by typing in localhost 4200, because that's the port that I've given it. And now you can go for the normal setup for Wiki.js, and then you have your own Wiki.js locally installed and importantly, mobile. You can use that across your uh, desktop whenever you want to, even if it's offline because it's all local. And later when you have a home lab, you can export this container and put it into another machine and have all the same data and everything running as you have before. So I hope that was helpful for you. Now you actually have a locally running instance of Wiki.js, a really great uh, piece of software. Uh, it runs really well, it's very fast, and because it's running in a container, later when you set up your home lab, if you don't have one, you can take that container, the contents of it, and move it over to a completely separate computer, your separate server, and run it all the same way and expose it the way you want to and access it on the network. So this is a really great way to kind of get started with services without actually having to do anything. And I think Wiki.js is a perfect example of one of the first things you could run locally on your computer. As always, if you do enjoy the video, press the like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me. As always, I will see you in the next video.